Hello my darlings, today I'm delivering to you a Bakugo story. I hope you enjoy it just as much as I enjoyed writing it. But before we go right into it, I would like to remind you to watch the video until the end, like or dislike and comment something down below. This enhances my standing in the YouTube algorithm and the higher my standing in the YouTube algorithm, the more people will watch my videos. The amount of people that have been telling me that I'm underrated has been growing while the views have been going down which is a paradox that I find rather strange. So if you can, if you want, and you know, I would be eternally grateful to you if you could share my videos around. If you can get just one person interested in my videos, again, I'd be eternally grateful to you. Um, you can post them on Discord, you can post them on Twitter, you can post them on Instagram, and I don't even mind it if you were to share clips of my videos to TikTok and then link to them, you know? Just do whatever you think helps me, okay? I'm also okay with fan art and Rule 34 fan art. Yes, I'm one of the few people that are actually okay with that. Alright, let's get right into the story. You didn't always get sick in the middle of class. In fact, you had a pretty good immune system. Worst case scenario was getting a cold twice per year. Honestly, you weren't really proud of it. You were a lazy person and took every excuse you could get to skip a day of school. Luckily, your teachers knew about your natural defenses, which meant you were pretty much always excused when you got sick for real, with no questions asked. Right now you were storming through UA's hallways, trying to reach the nearest toilet. You just barely made it in time. Not caring if anyone else was there, you jumped inside one of the stalls, knelt in front of the porcelain throne. As your stomach contracted, nausea crawling up your throat, chunks of your lunch flooded out of your wide open mouth. You heaved again, and once more the toilet bowl endured your seemingly ceaseless torrent of half-digested food. You reached, until only clear liquid was coming up. You wretched, until only clear liquid was coming up. Your throat felt sore from the stomach acid that had been layering it. Sadly, there was no one to fetch you a glass of water to get the disgusting taste of vomit out of your mouth. You leaned back, out of breath. It's not coming out of your nose, and a single strand of spit ran down your mouth. You coughed as the pain in your throat became worse. How you managed not to get teary-eyed was a mystery to you. The smell coming from your throat made you gag, but you needed to collect yourself to keep at least a little bit of your dignity. If there ever was one. With shaking hands, you reached into a small handbag you had, strapped around your shoulder. Thankfully, none of the gunk had hit it. You pulled out a small package of orange juice. For a moment, you considered drinking the sour drink, but the thought alone made you wretch. So you simply took a single sip and kept it in your mouth before spitting the liquid out. At least now the taste was gone. You sighed in relief, when suddenly, You alright? It came from the store next to you. Problem was, it was a male voice. Did you run into the wrong restroom? No. No, no, no. There weren't any funerals when you entered. What are you doing in that god's toilet, you perf? You said with playful anger. If it was a pervert, you desperately hoped you'd ruin his little parade. With a hushed tone, the voice replied. Not really, he said. I walked into the wrong toilet and now I'm too scared to leave. If you weren't so exhausted, you would have laughed. <laughs> so what now? A noise indicated that he shrugged. Dude, I can see you. You grumbled loud enough for them to hear. Oh yeah, well, uh... I don't know. 
That was a great answer. Exactly what you needed right now. Not. You sighed. Fine, just let me gather myself. He muttered loud enough for him to hear. So, like, what's wrong? He said, clearly embarrassed by the entire situation. Honestly, I skipped breakfast and overrated lunch. He gave a light cough, which was clearly a failed attempt at suppressing a chuckle. That was a lie. In truth, your stomach had been giving you troubles all morning, but it had been bad enough to excuse yourself from your schoolwork. So what are you doing in the toilet, creep? You mused with mild sarcasm to change the subject. Uh, I don't want to talk about it. You blinked. Was that sadness you heard? What? Did your pet die? If it did, sorry for being blunt. He gave a sad chuckle. No, oh, no, just one of my classmates. You blinked. The more words he spoke, the more you could pinpoint who that voice belonged to. You had a good memory when it came to voice, just not names. What's wrong with him? Okay, what's wrong with them? He sniffled. I... Wait, Bakugo? You interrupted with a surprised shout, and he went quiet. Wait, what is Mr. I'm better than all of you doing crying in the toilet? You left a real good impression during the tournament. Only now you realize you interrupted him. Oh, sorry. Bakugo sniffled. It's fine, I'm not crying. He growled. You sighed internally. You were way too exhausted to just leave, and too curious about this situation to just tell him to shut up. With a shrug, you accept your fate of playing back your psychiatrist. Okay, so what's wrong with your classmate? You said in a vague attempt to sound calm. It's Deku. Always oh, fucking Deku. He started. Yes, who is Stupid quirk. You could see where this was going. I'm not going to talk about the specifics here. You asked me to. It's too important. I, I get it. You furled your brows. Really now? He is strong. Really strong and has the potential to become number one. You thought for a moment about the possibility before asking. So, like, do you see that as an insult? He lightly stomped his foot on the floor in an attempt to gather his thoughts. Of course I do. It was my lifelong dream to become a world-renowned hero. The number one. He paused for a moment. I mean, how am I supposed to get there when... Stupid Deku's quirk sets him up to be the number one by default. You have. What? Yes. Just thinking that maybe my quirk would be perfect for you. He made a noise somewhere between intrigue and confusion. To be honest, I don't even know who you are. You giggled. I'm Tainted Lilith. He blinked before replying. Yeah, that your real name? With a blush, you told him your actual name. Uh, sorry, I'm trying to get used to saying my hero name instead of my normal one. Never heard of you before. It was obvious to you that he didn't mean it as an insult, but it still felt like one. I'm in class 2B. I'm one grade above you, and... If it weren't for your antics, I probably wouldn't even know you myself. At least you'd leave an impression. For a moment, both of you went quiet. Are you thinking? You asked. No, not really. Just surprised, senpai. You burst into short laughter. <laughs> don't, 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 don't. Don't call me that. Just, Lily is fine. 
He shrugged. Okay, Lil. The last person to ridicule your hero name by calling you Lil had to go to recovery, girl. But you let it slide. Just this once. Considering his situation. Being on the girl's toilet. So, I'm guessing you act the way you do because you feel like someone cheated you out of the position of the future number one. He wanted to say yes, but he choked. Bakugo wasn't sobbing, just tears kept streaming from his eyes. Look, when there's a really overpowered quirk, there really is no way around it. You need more teamwork. There are hero teams who, as a collective, get positions in the top list of players and might feel weird having to share it, but you'll still be able to give you you'll still be able to be a spot above him. Then again, there was always the chance this Deco would team up with someone else. I know, he said. It's just pressure I don't want or need. He paused and then realized the topic you two accidentally skipped. What did you mean by your quirk? You snickered. My quirk is called Tainted Love. My mom named it after her favorite song during my quirk evaluation. Don't ask. Anyways, with Tainted Love comes... Anyways, with Tainted Love come two abilities. Two abilities you were very proud of. Number one, my blood is highly acidic. Just spewing it a few pe... Number one, my blood is highly acidic. Just spewing a few drops into your eyes and you're blind. You just clean your face afterwards to not lose your face too. And the second part of my quirk is... You slithered your secret appendage with a crack under the toilet stall. A tail? He said in shock. Tail and stinger. Uh, problem is, the stinger releases something... The thing is, this thing releases something akin to steroids, meaning it makes people stronger. Not really something I can use against opponents, but with a teammate who wants to shine during a big battle... Well, I know you're smart enough that I don't need to explain the outcome. He gave an impressed whistle. If we were to form a team, would you would have free access to a non-addictive quirk enhancer and if you can stay close to me i can even reapply it mid-battle this all sounded incredibly childish juvenile and somewhat badass to you sounds good he said with mild surprise i'm glad i think he continued. Then you two went silent again. Just out of curiosity, since this Deku is a tier above you, you chuckled before continuing. <laughs> Does this mean you will stop feeling superior over everyone? Eh, like calling us extras and such? He asked curiously. He got a sad chuckle. <laughs> At this point, I think it would be out of character. People can grow, you answered. No, I mean it's ingrained. I'm proud like that. Besides, I use it to vent. Motivates me to become as good as I can. You smiled and then gulped loudly. So if we're wrong, he asked. No! You burped and leaned back over the toilet. Just another wave! You cried as bile quickly made its way up your throat and out of your mouth. The two of you remained in the restroom for the rest of class. Until you were done spitting out your stomach lining. 
On shaking legs, you opened your stall door and took a look around the hallway. All clear. Okay, you can come out, you said over your shoulder. Steps approached you from behind. And when you turned around to greet the blonde, face to face, his mouth dropped. What? You asked. You're... I'm... What? Well, despite the grin on your face, you're... pretty odd. You blushed. That was a weird and very blunt attempt at flirting. Probably a revenge for talking about a potential dead pet. Only now you notice that he was roughly one hand length smaller than you. And with a grimace, you ruffled his hair. Okay, I go to recovery go for the evening. When I feel better, you know where to find me. You winked before clutching your stomach, slowly walking into the opposite direction of where you came from, towards the nurse's office. Bakugo, however, just stood there dumbfounded. Uh, where is that exactly? He asked loud enough for you to hear in your direction. The dorms of 2B, you dork! You replied, shouting over your shoulder. Who the hell are you calling dork? He answered angrily. Trying to contain yourself, you turned around, quickly approaching him. Defiantly, he looked into your eyes when your noses were almost touching. But you simply muttered, The cute bastard right here in front of me. Then you softly kissed his forehead, and he blushed hard. Next one will be on the mouth if you act nice. And I'm no longer sick. Got it? You gave him a cocky grin and winked. Before once again turning around, leaving Bakugo behind. He was a speechless and blushing mess. And eventually, quietly, he asked himself, Wait, did... Did I just get a girlfriend? <laughs>